What's up everybody, Jeremy Gerard from Mythic Customs here with another one of my customizing tutorial videos. Today we're going to actually talk about painting metallics on your figures. So this is one of the, the paint techniques or paint uh, options that a lot of people struggle with because working with metallic paints can sometimes be a bit challenging. There's a couple different ways that I think you can apply metallics to figures, everything from dry brushing on, some armor wear, to painting certain details of the armor, to actually giving armor a full on repaint to make it a certain metallic color you're going for. We're going to talk about all three of those options on this video today. So let's start with dry brushing. Now, I've done a whole video just on dry brushing, so I'm not going to go tons of detail into this. But what you're talking about with dry brushing is where you're taking a figure that maybe doesn't have a lot of paint details on it, something like a Mythic Legion's Legion Builder. So the base figure that I have here in my hands, this started out as a Goblin Legion Builder. So as you know, the Goblin Legion Builders are all one color and they're a great base color to work with because they're that kind of almost like gunmetal type uh, grayish color. So when you're going to use a metallic on that just to add some wear, dry brushing is what you're going for. Again, watch the previous video. This is when you're going to put a little bit of paint in your paint tray, dip your brush in, and then wipe your brush off on like a paper towel to make it dry. And then you're just going to lightly go over the areas of the figure itself. Now, when I do dry brushing, or actually when I do any metallics, I actually tend to use some of the more inexpensive paints, what I call craft store paints. So I've also done a video all about painting where I talk about the different kinds of paints. There's the hobby store kind, which is like Vallejo and Citadel, and there's the craft store kind, which is stuff like this Craft Smart here. So Craftsmart, this is a brand that I actually get at Michael's Crafts. Um, you can certainly get them at the other craft stores as well. And there's a lot of other craft store brands, Apple Barrel, Folk Art, there's a whole bunch. Very inexpensive. A bottle of this will probably be like a buck or two. Um, the metallic line from Craftsmart are the ones that I really, really like a lot. And not only for dry brushing, but for all of these different applications, this is actually the brand I use. So this particular color here, this is tin. This is uh, Craftsmart Tin Metallic. This is the one that I really like for dry brushing. Again, dip that brush in, dry it off, and just rub it over kind of the areas that you want to add that wear to. Um, when I do dry brushing metallics, I like to really focus on the edges. So like on the gauntlets, the edges of the armor, the, the, the hands. Because you're dry brushing, you're only going to actually get the kind of the raised areas of the sculpture. It's not going to get into those crevices. So all of the areas of that armor that would be exposed, that would probably, you know, gnash other, other armor and weapons as they're fighting, that's what you're going to get. And by dry brushing on that metallic, you're going to get that sense of wear, that sense of like scuffing of the armor. That works really well. So that's the easiest thing you can absolutely do by painting metallics. Now the next thing we're going to talk about is painting armor details, okay? So just areas of the armor. So this is a figure here. This is my Shadow Jaguarian. And what you're going to notice here is look on his, his armor on his uh, shoulder pauldron there. That started out as one colored piece. That started out as a uh, armor piece from a barbarian builder kit. So it's just one color, that kind of black color. And what I wanted to do was I wanted to add some of that coppery detail on it. Um, I made this to match the colors of the Shadow Elves and they use that coppery color. So I was trying to maintain that. Now what I did in this case, once again, is I used one of the Craftsmark colors. I used their copper. So Craftsmark Copper is actually a color I use all the time. It also works great for dry brushing. If you dry brush this copper on, you can absolutely transform the look of one of those, like say Goblin Legion builders, because it turns them from that like gunmetal gray to very much this coppery type color. But when I paint on metallic details like this, what I am doing is I'm not dry brushing, is I'm dipping my brush in and I'm actually just putting it right on. Now, the problem that a lot of people have with metallics is they tend to go on a little sloppy. They tend to go on kind of clumpy. 
Um, I'm definitely gonna make sure I shake my bottle first. I don't want any clumping. If I notice the paint is clumpy, that paint may be bad. I'm not going to use that. But specifically with a sculpture like this, because this armor is actually sculpted to be a little more gritty, it's got some, some pitting and some wear to it, it works okay if it's not an incredibly, incredibly smooth application. If this armor detail's a little rougher, it actually works with the sculpture. And that's important. Being able to work with the sculpture that you are actually painting is key to these coming out really, really nice. But in this particular case, I am gonna put that on there. Um, don't worry about globbing it all on. It is okay to do a couple thin coats. It will build up over time. If you do that first coat and it doesn't have the coverage you want, don't get discouraged. Let it dry, come back in a few hours, put a second coat on. You will find that as you build up these metallic paints, you're going to eventually achieve the overall coverage that you're looking for. So that's nice there, just painting those little armored details. I did something similar here where what I did was I took this figure. So this is a standard Mythic Legions figure. This is Deltagar the Destroyer. And Deltagar comes obviously with the bare chest and the bare arm, but he also came with the alternate head. And the alternate head is a very popular one. It's the what the, the Mythic Legions lines calls the Mercurians. So obviously very much inspired by uh, Spartan warriors. And what I wanted to do here to use this alternate head, because I have both of these figures on display in my collection. I have Delta Guard displayed as is, and then I have this figure displayed aside, uh, beside him. And what I wanted to do was fully armor him up. So I wanted to use an armored torso and an armored arm here, replacing the bare pieces on the normal figure to get that armor. Now these pieces came from a King Bromden Iron Jaw. So originally they had the gloss black I wanted. They had the gold highlights around, you know, the armor details, but all of the kind of that design that you have in the chest there, that was all like a reddish color. Again, the Sir Bromden Iron Jaw color. So what I did here was I used this color. So this is another Craft Smart. This is Festive Green. So I used this particular color, and what I did was I put on a couple light coats. Because in this case, unlike when I showed you that Jaguarian that was using really rough armor, these are finer details in the armor. When you're painting these fine details, you don't want to just glob on the paint because you don't want to override the details themselves. This is a perfect instance to do a couple light coats. Once again, when you put that light coat on of that green metallic and you start to cover what's there, you're going to find that it may not give you the intensity you want. It may not give you the coverage. That's okay. You've got to accept that it's not going to be perfect after the first coat. Let it dry. Come back, do a second coat. Um, depending on what color you're covering, sometimes I will start with like a base coat of black and then paint over that or even like a base coat that's similar to the color I'm trying to achieve, which is very important. I'm gonna talk about that in a moment. In this particular case, I do remember I just painted this right on top of the King Bromden Iron Jaws color. It did take a few coats, but once I was done, what I had painted was the details in the chest and the details on the side of the arm there. And really, if you look at the rest of the figure, the color is, is pretty spot on. It looks really, really solid. So those are where I would start when you're painting metallics, small projects. Certainly the dry brushing is the simplest. Adding little details to the armor, painting those details, changing them from one color to another. Because you're working on a very small area, you're going to find that it's easier to get coverage. But what about when you want to paint an entire figure or a larger piece that is a new metallic color? So this is a standard Sir Ignatius figure. This is from the very first Mythic Legions Wave 1.0. Um, and this was a figure, this was a bit of a sleeper in the line actually. A lot of people uh, passed on him early on during the initial Kickstarter and during the pre-orders. Um, he was one of the lower ordered figures in that wave. But when people got him in hand and they realized how cool this pearlescent type armor looked, a lot of people people 
went hunting him down. A lot of people that had skipped on him went hunting him down. Um, supply and demand, they wanted him. There wasn't a ton of orders, so there wasn't a ton in the market. Um, he became so popular that he was one of the initial Mythic Legions All-Stars. He was that inaugural wave Mythic Legions All-Stars one. He was in that line. So this pearlescent armor, very cool look. They did something similar in the Advent of Decay line with the Gadriel figure. So the female angel figure in the Advent of Decay wave has a very, very similar armor color to Sir Ignatius. And I wanted to use that figure, but I wanted to change the armor and use it on a male character. So what I did here, this is kind of my tribute to the G.I. Joe character of Storm Shadow. If you follow my page on Instagram, which is at Mythic Customs, um, a while back I did a whole series of G.I. Joe inspired characters. So what if those iconic G.I. Joe characters like Snake Eyes and Dustro and Storm Shadow were in the realm of mythos? What would that look like? It was a fun design challenge and this was my take on Storm Shadow, the, the white Cobra Ninja. Um, so what I did here was largely this is a Gladriel figure. The legs, the arms, the shoulder pads, those are all from Gladriel. The pauldron, actually not the pauldron, the folds armor, the waist armor here, is actually from a Sir Ignatius. And all I did was change some of the gold to silver, but the big change I had to do here was that torso. I had to repaint that torso, which is just a standard kind of uh, 2.0 male type torso. It's like the elf torso. A lot of people call it the phone dial torso because it's got that emblem, that circular emblem in the chest. Um, what I had to do was repaint that completely. And this is where I find that people have the hardest time with metallics. When you're trying to change the look of uh, a piece, when you're trying to totally change the color and make it a metallic. So what I have found works really, really good is you need to start with a base coat that is similar to the metallic you are attempting to paint. If you just try to paint that metallic right on top, the metallic is too thin. You would have to put so much on to actually change the overall look that it ends up just being a globby mess. So what I did in this case was I actually started by painting it white. And I'm holding up a bottle of Vallejo white here. But what I actually did for this one is I used a little bit of spray paint. Because I wanted nice, even coverage over the whole piece, I just used some white spray paint and I got it white. Now, obviously, if I just would have left it plain white, it wouldn't have matched the rest of the figure. Here's where the metallic comes in. I used this color here. This is another one of the Craftsmart colors. The color here that I'm holding up is called Pearl. So I have found that the Craftsmark Pearl is actually a really, really good match for the Sir Ignatius color and for the Gladriel color. But you have to start with that base. Once you have that base, then you can dry brush the metallic on top. Now you wouldn't think that because if you think about dry brushing, you think about it only wanting to get kind of those exposed areas like I talked about with the Goblin Legion Builder. But in this particular case, the reason I'm dry brushing is not because I don't want full coverage, it's because I really want to control the application of the paint. I want it to go on very lightly and I want to be able to build it up over time to get the final look I'm going for. So in this particular case, I'm going to dry brush that metallic pearl color on top of the white. And what you start to find is the under base color of white gives it the overall kind of tone you want, but that metallic dry brushing on top really start to change it subtly and it gives it that pearlescent look. It gives it that little bit of shine and sheen to achieve the end result that looks really, really good. Now, if you see this in person and you compare the work that I did on the chest to the arms, it's not 100% perfect, but you would have to be holding it this close and really comparing it to see the fact that there's a subtle difference. On display, at a glance, this actually looks really, really good, really, really close. And it is a tip that you can use for painting metallics across all of your figures. Even if you're not trying to necessarily match one to another, if you're painting a larger piece, if you're trying to paint, you know, an entire, uh, you know, armor, an entire torso or some legs or more than just like the details that I did on the Delta Gar figure, try that trick. Try to paint a base coat first that's similar 
to the color that you want. You know, if you're gonna do that per lesson, I wouldn't base that out in black because they're so, so incredibly different. So by basing it out in white, that's gonna allow me then to paint, dry brush paint, that metallic over it to get the end result that I want. So that's some tips about how I paint metallics, some options, some ways that you can add metallics. Um, if you enjoy these type of videos, let me know in the comments, give the video a like, and certainly subscribe to the channel if you're not already doing so. Until the, the next video that we do, thank you for watching. I can't wait to see what you make.